Okay, so now we're going to look into an example and see how we can calculate certain probabilities from the normal distribution. Now, we go ahead and say that student scores X, for example, um, scores out of 50, they are normally distributed with a mean of 30 and a variance of 49, which is to say a standard deviation of 7. Okay. And this is what it would look like. It's centered around mean of 30. And we are interested in finding out the interval or the probability, essentially, the area under the curve, which represents the probability, in this interval of 24 and 39. So we want to find out what is the probability that a student scores between 24 and 39. So that is the problem under consideration. And we want to find out this probability. And we find this out by calculating this area under the curve. Now, if we do this manually, the way to do it would be to find corresponding z-scores. Remember, the first step is to transform the x-axis to the z-axis. And we do it using this expression. And we plug in these values. x is 39. mu The mean is 30. Sigma is 7. Turns out to be 1.29. So this 39 gets converted to 1.29 on the z-axis. Similarly, we convert to 24. So that would be 24 minus 30 over 7, right? And that gives us negative 0.85. So we get these two z values, which correspond now to uh, this. So we have essentially transformed our uh, x, our our standard normal, we've transformed our normal distribution to a standard normal uh, graph, as we can see here. Notice the axis. So this is the x-axis and this is the z-axis. We've converted 39 and 24 into 1.29 and minus 0.85. And the standard normal is centered around 0. And we could subtract 30 from 30 and divide it by 7. That would turn out to be 0. So we've transformed these three values. We've got our standard normal set in. The only thing left now is to find out this central area. Because this is transformed, we could head over to the z-table to find out these values. Now notice we are essentially going to be putting these values in, right? To find out the, the area on the left-hand side, the z-table gives us the area to the left-hand side. So 1.29 so 1 is a z-value, and we go ahead and find that particular uh, probability. 1.2 is here, and 1.29 would be around here. If I could also um, circle these out just for good measure. So 1.2 is here, and I am looking for this value, 1.29. Okay, so this row and then this column. So 1.29 is essentially uh, looking it up from the z value. It tells me that the area is 1.29, corresponding to 1.29 is 0 0.9. 015. So that is the area to the left hand side of this. This is not, this is the entire area. This is not the shaded red area that we were interested in. So we are going to subtract this smaller area from this larger area to get hold of this central area. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we are set out to do. Right? We have these two values. We find areas to the left of them, subtract them to obtain the central interval uh, area. Okay, so we've this was straightforward because this was a positive z value and we could easily calculate it, see it, read it from the z table. The problem here is with this negative uh, z value where we say it's negative 0 0.85 because the z table does not have a negative value. So what do we really do? One thing we could do is we could flip this to the right hand side, call it a positive value. So this becomes a 0 point plus 0 0.85. And once we have 0 0.85, the, our area of interest, the area of interest we are interested in like that, that is our area of interest, the smaller area is now actually being represented here. Okay, notice, it's on the left-hand side, it's the smaller area. When we flip it, this area is in fact now here on the right-hand side. Uh, but the z-table gives us area to the left-hand side. It gives us this green area. So when we look up 0 0.85, when we look up 0 0.85, which turns out to be specifically this uh, particular value, let me also mark it, 0 
five would be this value, right? 0 0.85, it's going to be this value. So when we mark 0 0.85, uh, 0 0.83, So yes, this turns out to be 0 0.8023. So that is the green uh, area. It's to the left-hand side. We're interested in this. So one of the things we could do is we could simply subtract from one this specific area, right? So one minus 0 0.8023 gives us 0.1977. And this is our area that we are interested in, right? So we have subtracted the green area from the total area 1, and we get this smaller area that we were interested in, 0.1977. Notice this is the same as this. It is the same area as this. And what we could go ahead now with is simply uh, use this value and use the area that we have here and subtract them. So 0 0.9015 minus 0 0.1977, that should give us, let me calculate this, 0 0.1977, 0 0.7038. So this gives us uh, 0 0.7038. Now this 0 0.7038, the difference between these areas the difference between this and this smaller area is the central area of our interest and that marks our answer this is in fact how do i interpret this this is in fact the probability that a student scores between 24 and 39 marks right so this is this is this is that area let me also just uh draw this yeah, so this is that area 0 0.7038. Now, this is something we've done on paper now. This is something we've done on paper. We've done it with a paper and pen. We've kind of uh, done it manually. But we have tools to our disposal, and we would want to use them, right? Uh, so let's just try to formulate this in this example in, uh, in Excel and see what do we get there. Uh, the formula that I am interested in is norm dist. So that is the formula, normal distribution. Now, this formula requires that you plug in the value of your interest, which is 39 in my case, right? 39, 24, these are the two values of my interest. So 39 and the mean value is 30, the standard div is seven. And yes, this is accumulative distribution. It accumulates as you go from the left to the right, and the probabilities accumulate. So yes, this is accumulative. And this gives me a value of 0.900. Uh, seven. Um, and that's okay. Uh, there seems to be a slight difference in terms of uh, the decimals, right? Um, this is 0 0.9007. What we looked up from the Z table was point, um, hold on, it was 0 0.9015. Right? So we were looking up the value against 1.29, but this is a more accurate value because it is taking care of the decimals for a larger precision. Notice how we, um, our eye, uh, kind of, uh, kind of approximated my z value to just two decimal places. Right? Uh, I used these d these z values to two decimal places, but Excel is going to handle all of them, so this is a more accurate uh, representation. So that is for um, that is for uh, 39. The problem here is for 24. So let's just go ahead and use the norm list one more time, and this time try to get uh, the answer for for this. And this gives me 0.195. Six, which was similar to 0.1956 here. 
uh, it's slightly different but it is at least correct to 0.19 uh, the excel is giving me a more accurate values but this is giving me this smaller area and so i have both of these areas and what i can do now is i can do a simple subtraction between this and this cell to arrive at my answer of 0 0.705 so this is 0 0.703 um, the final answer, but here I have 0 0.705 as the final answer. So now this is the way to do it on Excel where you could simply uh, go ahead and plug in your X values. Notice these are the X values and then this is the mean and then the standard dev. So you could use this to arrive at the correct answer. Now remember you use the X values, you supplied the mean and uh, the standard dev. You could also use another formula for the standard normal, right? So this includes the dot s in between. Notice this does not include the dot s. Uh, you supply the mean and the standard dev, but here it takes, this is purely for the standard normal. So you don't need to supply the mean and variance in this, you supply the z value in this. Okay, so let's uh, try it with our z values as well. So we had a z value of 1.29. So let's, uh, so this was our, uh, the one part of our interval, right? 1.29 was the first Z value. And let's use this formula to norm S dist. So 1.29 was the first one. And the second one was negative 0.85. Okay, so let's also use this. Or negative 0.85 and these are what I these are the z values that I used uh, that I calculated and approximated to two decimal numbers so I've got these two areas what's left now is to subtract them and that also gives me a value right and these are uh, pretty much uh, similar it's just uh, the decimal places of precision but we do arrive at this number of 0 0.70 okay so these are the ways to use Excel to calculate the intervals or the probabilities the areas and within two numbers in a normal distribution so you would not need to convert to z values if you're using this formula on the left hand side if you are converting to z values you could use the formula on the right hand side to use them they have a small difference of dot s in between this is one way to do it um, another thing that I am keen on doing is uh, using these z values in Python how do you do it in Python so we have 1.29 and negative 0.85 and if I were to calculate this interval this this area in between in Python uh, I could always uh, import the scientific python library the scipy and use the stats uh, library from within it import it as stats and then use the normal distribution and the cumulative density function from it well it only needs the z value in between in my case it's uh, 1.29 and the other one is negative 0.85 so i might as well uh, subtract it as i'm doing it negative point Eight, five, right so I've got one uh, Z value here this is going to get the entire area and from this entire area I'm going to subtract the area to the left of negative 0.85 the area to the left of negative 0.85 so I'm subtracting these areas and if I run this cell it should give me some uh, some uh, value of probability this is negative this is 0 0.7038 0 0.7038 is in fact the the area that we kind of uh, also calculated so that gives me the correct area or this is in fact the probability that a student scores between 24 and 39 so we've seen three ways to do this on paper using paper and pen yes we restrict it to two decimal places we want to read the z table and that's good and fine we have done it on excel using the x values as they are seems to give a more correct uh, answer because it's calculating or handling the decimal places in itself it's also fine to use it uh, use the norm s dist formula with the z values 
and that also gives us the correct uh, areas and then we could subtract them to get our answers the final answer the interval area and we've also seen a way to do it in Python now where we could plug in the Z values subtract them and get hold of our uh, area in between that we are interested in. 